the reformed Mark II lineup of Deep Purple. Lord, Pace, Gillen, Glover, and of course, that impish fella, Richie Blackmore. Richard Skinner collared Roger and John just before the set and asked John, ah, how are you feeling? I'm uh, my usual state of quiet panic. <laughs> um, I've always been nervous for a gig, especially ones like this, and especially in uh, the UK for some reason. When was the last time that Deep Purple played a gig in, in Great Britain? Uh, it was the last gig, actually, that we played as a band before we split up, uh, which was... 26th of March 1976. Good grief, you can tell this man is a biographer. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I do remember it very well. Yes, how did it go? Well, it was awful, which is basically why we decided to split up. Um, I mean, not to store over old uh, coals, but, um, you know, it wasn't going too well with certain uh, colonial members of the band. <laughs> <laughs> and I went up to Pacey after the, the gig and said, I think this is it, chap. You know, I don't want to see any more of this kind of stuff going on and he said it's funny I was just going to come and say the same thing to you so that was then and this is much more exciting how did the tour go I mean from the beginning did it seem to gel together because we must remind everybody that you've done a major world tour so that you're still in the middle of it in a sense there's yeah. more to go after this yeah it was uh, remarkably I don't want to sound glib but it was remarkably easy the rehearsals went with a, a, a swing you know and it seemed like we didn't need to rehearse as much as we thought we were going to have to, except we were arguing about what key Highway Star was in. I, said, <laughs> <laughs> I still think we're playing it in the wrong key. <laughs> but um, um, it went very well, um, and we went over to Australia to start because we figured that if it went wrong, it's, it's best to be as far away from your front door as possible. Um, and Perth, Western Australia, was the first gig. Everyone was ri ridiculously nervous. I've never seen Blackmore that nervous. I've never seen Roger that nervous. Is it a, a case of, you know, feeling that there's a lot to prove, you know, that you've still got it and it still works? And Yeah, I think Roger puts this better than anyone, so I'll let him say what he, he believes about that. The microphone passes to Mr. Roger Glover, who has been distinctly quiet up to this point. Well, that's because he had the microphone. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> so carry on the same point. I was um, against the reunion for, for quite a long time. Whatever Purple was, it was a product of its time, the early 70s, late 60s. And um, we've been called innovative, whether that's true or not. Uh, we certainly couldn't be that innovative if, if ever we were in 1980, whatever it would be. Mm. And I certainly didn't want to be seen to be um, using whatever glory we had in the past to shore up whatever we didn't have in the future. Roger, what changed your mind? What twisted your arm? Um, well, Ian Gillen, who I think is probably rightly called the architect of the reunion, uh, basically because he, he called more than anyone else. <laughs> He wouldn't let up, and he came over to see Richie and I and said, what do you think about it? We went, no. And he didn't give up, he kept calling. So he finally agreed to, well, let's talk about it. And that reunion, which took place early last year, over in Connecticut, in America, um, that was an eye-opener. It was nice to see everyone. Um, we haven't been the closest of friends in the intervening 11 years. There was a lot to talk about, and the main thing, I think, was whether we had any music to play together because everyone thinks that now there's lots of money being talked about. Um, but the most important thing to us, I think, was whether we could make any music. Did it feel better than it had first time round, do you think? Yes, I think it did. I, I remember when I first joined Purple, it was a, a wonderful feeling for me to be in a band that, that took me seriously as a writer and that was also capable of playing anything I could think of. Um, the second time round was, um, I think John said it best, actually, it's fun. Do you think, John, that, um, that maybe you've all grown up a bit as well as, as years have gone by? That oh, yes. Not, maybe, maybe egos. Uh, egos have, have been able to be put back into the cupboard and, and, and forgotten a bit, and you can pull together more now. Yeah, uh, I believe that to be essentially correct. Um, nobody has anything to prove to another member of the band anymore. Um, so that element's been taken away. I think we were all fairly worried that that we'd go out on stage and no matter how good it was, it wouldn't be as good as people thought it was or thought it was going to be. Uh, and that's constantly in our minds now that uh, whatever we play is t to make it as good as we possibly can so that any uh, memories, or rose-tinted however they may be, of the past that people have are just pushed to one side and with what's going on now. Um, because we felt when we rehearsed and recorded last year that we could compete with any 85 rock band, 84, 85 rock band on the same level and probably a better level. 
uh, because we've got uh, so much collective experience. They say, the critics have said, that you are the band that, that America particularly was waiting for, you know, that there was this terrific gap for a band of your style. Yeah, well, I think um, of the bands of the early 70s, that there aren't many left still doing it with freshness. And to me, that was the important thing we did on this reunion. We made an album first before we toured. If we toured and just played Smoke on the Water, it would have been an empty feeling. I think it had to have substance for us, for us to continue. Bye. 